Okay, I've got a demijohn which is 4.5 litres, um, which is one gallon, um, which you need for this wine recipe. I've got brewer's sugar, I've got a hydrometer, I've got airlock and rubber bungs, I've got a siphon kit, and then I've actually got the rosé winemaking kit. Now, all of this stuff here I got from the same uh, shop in the UK, which is called Wilkinson's, or Wilco, I don't know if they've actually changed their name properly. Who cares? Um, and, you know, you can have more or less things than this. You don't specifically need a hydrometer or a demijohn. You can use a plastic jar, as long as it's got enough to hold the amount of wine you're making. But um, use what you've got, use what you can. Oh, and one other thing, where's that gone? Oh. Got some sterilizing um, stuff for the demijohn. You want everything as sterile as possible. Um, again, that came from Wilco's. In total, uh, not including the demijohns because I got given them by a friend, this all came to about £15. Uh, maybe a little bit more, I can't really... No, that about £15. I do have some old wine bottles and I do have some corks and a corking machine, but that's for a later date. Okay, this specific sterilizing um, powder says to use four teaspoons um, for every four or four to five liters of water. These obviously hold 4.5 so I use four four spoonfuls and because I'm being resourceful and I don't need to clean them properly yet um, because these are all sterilized anyway I've got a um, container here which has got my hydrometer, the um, airlocks and the bungs in because I'll, I'll tip this out into there and then give them a preliminary wash in there as well. Now this says that it's, a, it's an oxidizer, which is things like potassium nitrate and so on are oxidizers. Um, so it'd be quite fun to see if I can add this to sugar or charcoal or something and make a, some sort of flare. Maybe another project for another day. It says use a plastic stirrer. All I've got is the thing from the, um, from the actual siphon, so I'll use that. Try and dissolve as much as I can. Yeah, this is having an exothermic reaction, so don't use hot, hot, hot water. Because you could probably make this boil. A little bit like the reaction from having lye. Lye is an exothermic reaction, and if you put it in water, it gets hotter and hotter, and you know that's what you use to clean drains and stuff. Also known as sodium hydroxide. Right, it says leave for 10 minutes, but what I'll do, because there's still stuff that hasn't dissolved at the bottom, is every couple of minutes I'll come back and I will mix it up. Now, obviously you're wearing gloves to stop contamination. Uh, if you go off and do something that you would normally do, you know, don't don't wear the gloves. Or change your gloves, you know, you don't want to contaminate the, the gloves, there's no point. One of the most common things you're to do is you go off and use your phone. Your phone can be an extremely, extremely dirty um, thing, so I wouldn't advise using that. You didn't know I was magic, did you? Yeah, it's starting to clear at the bottom, which is exactly what sodium hydroxide does after it finishes, well, once it's completely um, absorbed. It, um, it clears, it just, it'll just go clear all the way up. It's like a slow version of the iodine cl time clock reaction. Okay, 10 minutes are up, so I'm gonna pour this out into our container. Now 
put that bung in just so that I can actually keep airborne stuff from out of it just while I clean all this off. I'm going to leave them to um, sterilise. Next thing I need to do is rinse this with cold water. Okay, what we need to do next is get this blinking thing open. Oh, it's a pain in the bum. Okay, something flinged off there. I'm not sure what it was. We'll find out soon. Right. So we need to empty the can into the Demijohn tin opener. Hopefully it goes without saying that any tools you use have to be sterilised as well. Okay. Now the one thing I don't have is a funnel. The only funnel I had I used in an experiment and um, didn't end well for the funnel, let's put it that way. I'm going to pinch the tin to make it easier to pour, hopefully. Now it says add 1.8 litres of cold water. Now. I don't have a jug. Don't know where it's gone. I had it, well I've got two. I just don't know where they are. So this is two litres of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it in all two litres or as much as I can get in. And then um, when I have to pour in the next lot I will just pour to the top, you know. Okay. So that's two litres and all I need to do is take off the 0.2 of a litre um, with the next lot I put in. One thing I haven't said is what came along with this tin is these things. We've got, um, let's see, sachet A is wine yeast, B is Nutrafine, C is wine stabiliser and E is wine finings. Next thing I need to do is pour out um, 400 was it 400, 450 grams of brewing sugar but again I don't have a jug for some reason some buggers nick me jugs what I'm going to do is fill this cup up um, to whatever you know the highest I can each time because then I can grab it and I can pour it in a little bit easier okay that's 150 now because I'm not an idiot I'm going to write down 150. Because otherwise I may end up forgetting and put too much or too little in. Oh, this isn't going well already. So we've lost a few grams, so I'll put a little bit extra in at the end. So I need. 130 so a little bit more than 130 okay I put 140 Okay. Now, give it a swirl. Every now and again you can see a large cluster of um, sugar going past, so it still needs to be swirled more. Still a little bit, but not nothing major. 
Okay, so next we need to add the uh, yeast, which is sachet A. Try and make sure it's all down at the bottom so you don't want to lose any. You know, sometimes, because these have got a plastic liner, the um, the yeast gets stuck in different places. Sometimes it gets electrostatically stuck, and just a couple of taps will get it out, but other times it gets caught in the corners and stuff. So try your hardest to get it all out. Okay, next. Uh, the Nutrifying, where are we? Which is Sachet B. Now we need to swirl it all around again. Now, you don't want it to get caught on the sides. So you'll notice that a lot of it has come up onto the edges. There you, go. you will always get a little bit, but not, you know, you don't want huge clumps of it. Now we need to put the bung in. Right, now to fill the airlock. So basically all this is going to do now is air can bubble up and out, so it will go through the airlocks and out, but nothing can come back in through it. Okay, that's all we have to do until day three. See you then. One thing I forgot to mention um, was you don't want this in an area that drops below about 25, well, 20 to 25 degrees. Um, that's the way C, so that is this in Fahrenheit. Okay, it's day three, and you might be able to hear it bubbling away behind. It's quite active at the moment. Um, I had to cover it in my dressing gown because I like to cuddle wine. No, um, the temperature drops quite, quite a lot in here, and you should keep it between 25 and 30 degrees, well, between 20 and 30 degrees C. Um, so I just thought I'd cover it up. That keeps it around 22-ish, 23. So, you know, it's, it's fine. Now, it's day three, and today I need to fill it up with water up to about the 4.5 litre mark, which is one gallon. Um, and it's best to use cooled, boiled water. So I better go and boil the kettle. Okay, let's have a look at it inside. Look at that. It's looking like a mad inventor's concoction, isn't it? Right, so I need to take the lid off, uh, the lid, the bung out, carefully. Now I'm going to fill it up, and I want to fill it up nearly to the top. Um, and this is cold boiled water, I'm just going to check it's cool enough, yeah, it's nice and cold. Let's see how much of this I get everywhere. Okay, I'll get some more. Okay, that'll do. Now what I'm gonna do for the time being, because it's quite chilly in my room, is I'm going to put a lamp on it just to get it so it's up to a certain temperature because obviously that water was cold water and it's probably made the temperature drop in there well, it's not too it's not too bad I'm just going to mix it around quickly There we go, and I'm going to cover it back up, put it back to bed. As the um, fermentation, well, it fills back up with gases, 
it will fill up here and it will just push this water back around. Now I'm going to leave this for around 7 to 10 days. Um, it basically, when this stops bubbling, we need to do the next part. So I'll see you back then. Okay, as you'll see, this is the next morning and the airlock is now filled with a nice coloured... Well, it's wine, isn't it? We all know that. Now, the reason this has happened is... I, I thought it was over... I overfilled it and this happened last time too. Um, but it's not. It's not actually that I've overfilled it. What I should have done is filled it up to a certain amount, a lo um, maybe an inch or two lower, waited for the reaction to start dying down and then fill it up completely to the top you don't have to do this but um, it is a way of actually um, stopping your airlock filling up with wine now there's so much co2 escaping at the moment I could put a cloth on the top which would stop nasties getting in because the co2 would be pushing past it or I can just leave it and it's not a, not a major big deal and that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna leave it I've put some um, kitchen roll down here which I'll change intermittently um, but it's nothing major, you know, we're we're losing bits of the, the bubbles, the froth off the top. So we're not actually losing, you know, anything that's going to cause us to cry too much about it. I just thought I'd show you that. Anyway, see you in about seven days. Because the temperature's getting colder at the moment, at night especially, um, I'm going to put them uh, both. I've got my wine and my pear thing. I think it's going to be a cider, but it might not be. It could be a poison, who knows. I'm going to put them both in this box, which I've put a small layer of this like kids play foam stuff in. I'm going to put them on it, and then I'm going to um, surround them with a dressing gown and some various other warming aids, just to keep them so that they don't drop below 20 degrees. Now I doubt they will, but it just means that they stay at a more consistent temperature. Just look how lovely and warm they look. Right, the wine is on the right. As you can tell, it's bubbling away like a beauty. And then the pear kind of cidery thingy my job is on the left. Okay, so last night the fermentation stopped in our wine. So basically we need to go on to the next step. Maybe I'll get my dressing gown back after this. Right. Trying very hard not to mix anything up. Okay, there's the odd air bubble, well, CO2 bubble coming through. So what I might do is give it a bit of a shake. Okay, I'm going to leave it for another hour and see where we are after that. If I think it's still fermenting, then I will leave it for a little bit longer. Okay, like I'd assumed, the um, the bubbles were just from moving it around and some carbon dioxide being pushed out. The next um, step we need to do is add the wine stabilizer. And what you need to do is add the wine, wine, add the wine stabilizer to a cup. Make sure it's clean and sterile if possible. Now, this isn't always powder, but more often than not it is. So what you need to next do is add some um, cool boiled water. Just enough to be able to dissolve it. it dissolves pretty easily. And then add that to the demijohn. Mm. 
now you want to add some more water to that because you want to get every single bit of the stabilizer and again add it Oops. Okay, now put your bung back in. If you can be bothered to clean the bung and the airlock is best, but if you can't be asked, then you know, such is life. But give it a swirl around. You want to try and get rid of as much of the carbon dioxide as possible. What you want to add now is the finings and that is because that will clear it up as you can see looking through it one second basically it's not see-through at all there's loads of sediment all inside here and lots of other things particulates floating around adding the finings will just drop them out of solution and you should hopefully have a really nice see-through clean wine I say hopefully because once this didn't work and it doesn't happen immediately by the way this is over quite a few days cut a small corner off because you want to be able to get as much of this in as possible if not all of it and like a boss I got it all in that doesn't normally happen you see now for the next 24 hours you want to be able to Swirl this around, and again, this is to get all of the um, CO2 out, and also to mix as much of the findings in as you can. The further, the more they dissipate, the more um, of the particulates will drop out. You will notice that every time you shake it, you will get more air bubbles coming up. that's to be expected. One thing I'm going to do quickly is add a bit more water. Again this is cooled boiled water. Never obviously use boiled water while it's still boiling I mean. Okay now the idea is you leave this for 10 days in a cool dry place and what you want to do is just wait for everything to just drop out of solution. Um, the more it's messed with the more obviously the more disturbed it becomes the more everything will bubble up and be, you know, throughout your wine. You want this to be completely see-through. You want it to be obviously a nice pink, but you want to be able to see right through it. Every three or four hours, just give it a swirl to get all of the finings in and to get all of the carbon dioxide out. Or just let them sit next to each other. That way they can help each other drop out of solution. Okay, welcome to my really messy workshop, but today we're actually going to siphon off the wine. It's actually been a lot longer than it should have been. I may put the days up here, I may not. Um, this is all my fermentation stuff, but I've had all these wine bottles um, sterilised and uh, they've been here for a few days, but I've had them covered so hopefully, you know, contaminants won't have got into them. Now, this um, pack says it will take up to six bottles. What I will do is put an extra bottle down just in case. And obviously we need a tester, so you know, it'd be nice to have one of them. So I'll just grab a random bottle and then shove that here in case there's more. Um, the rest of the bottles, if you, I don't know if they're in shot, they probably are. Um, therefore my Perry um, cider, and we'll see how that goes. Right. Now, I, I have left this way, way too much longer than I should have, so hopefully it still tastes like wine. I don't know. Now what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put this in a partial amount. Oh, it looks a lot clearer than I thought. Okay, 
so let's start. I should have started at the back, but I panicked. Now, George, this is a siphon working. I'm not obviously sucking any more out, am I? It's just doing it itself. If it, if the the drop was more, so if it this was higher, the speed would be higher too. Yeah. So like the pressure would be higher. So as you can see, the siphon's working without me doing anything about it, if you didn't know what a siphon was. But also, um, there's not much pressure pushing it down. Um, if I was, oh, if I was higher, like, or if, sorry, if the demijohn was higher, we'd have a lot higher pressure. Right, I'll be back once I've done them all. Okay, we've got six um, bottles and a little bit in another one. But unfortunately, it's cloudy. It was supposed to be rosé and it's not. And I said to Crystal the other night, um, something's happened when I've added in the um, finings and something's happened and it's just not dropped out of solution. Let me show you. So it's more like a red wine than a rosé, unfortunately. And I made a huge mess everywhere. So, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I have one of these things for corking. Um, I've got to say I'm really disappointed by this one. Not this wine, but by the process. Something's gone wrong. And um, as I say, I've, done the, I've used this exact wine before and it didn't go like this. It, this is cloudy, it's not dropped out of suspension. I'm just a bit disappointed, but it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna finish it off by corking it up. This was gonna be some Christmas presents, but you know, I'm not gonna give this to anyone. Um, but all you need is a little corking device. Now I've got two of these, I don't know where the second one is offhand, but basically all you do is you chuck your cork in this bit, and then you put this on top of the bottle. You plonk it on. Using great amounts of strength. This is one of my corking machines, and I haven't ever used this before, so I've got no idea if it's going to work, but I'm going to try anyway. If not, I'll go back to my usual one. I think I pooed. Right, so there we go. One's caught. Cool.